Good morning, everybody. My name is Liz Baynard. I am a stager and a co-owner of a company uh, called Maxwell and Edison Interiors. We're a Catonsville, Baltimore-based staging company. But I'm here today just to talk pro staging um, benefits, um, how Keller Williams can see it as a, a tool for you guys to help sell more listings for more money and faster, which I know is what everybody's interested in. Um, those of you who may have attended the previous um, shift tactic lesson, pricing strategies, seller pricing strategies, um, there were a few keys that were covered um, to getting the home sold. So there's location, there's pricing, and then obviously there's the condition of the home. The location, we don't have a whole lot of control over. So where you guys come in is the price and then staging the home effectively to get it in its best condition possible to sell it. So that's pretty much what we're gonna focus on and talk about today. Um, feel free to do the hand raise or just call out at any time if you have a question or you wanna stop me um, to comment on anything that you hear. I would love to get a little bit of your perspective um, as the agents as we walk through this together. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so our main ideas we're gonna talk about today are the perspective on staging. So first and foremost, the issue of the day. We talked a little bit about pricing and staging the home. So staging is a marketing tool that can turn the house into essentially a commodity. That's something I share with my clients a lot. They may have lived in the house for a year, 25 years, and it's very hard to sort of shift your perspective and see this not as the home where your kids grew up, but a commodity that we're gonna put on the market. And that can be a big part of what staging does to help the buyers see that as their potential new dream home and not as a place where another family has done their living. Um, so stripping the reality of day-to-day -day life, so all this, the clutter and the things that we see every day can kind of help create the ideal, sell the dream, um, create a fantasy lifestyle that we want buyers to, to jump on and certainly want to purchase. Um, sellers have to either offer more for the same price as their competition or offer the same quality at a lower price. So we see staging as something that's gonna create that value. Um, I have a quote here, pricing and staging are the issues of the day. It's like a price war and a beauty pageant. So that's kind of the world we're moving into in this market right now. Um, so what's the solution? Staging, um, that can mean a wide variety of things. I think probably everybody has um, a picture in their mind when they hear that word. You might picture a moving van pulling up and loading rooms with furniture, or you might just picture going in and helping someone declutter to personalize. From my perspective, it's sort of that umbrella covers everything in between. So we can be talking very minimal, kind of simple interventions, if you will, um, like going in and doing a consultation using the owner's items and just helping them to pare down what's there and to make it photo ready, all the way up to basically taking all of the furniture out of the home or if we're dealing with a vacant home, bringing in that furniture to actually um, create rooms, living room, dining room, master bedroom, all the things that we'll be talking about together. Um, so that kind of runs the whole gamut of what staging can mean. So your sellers, keeping in mind that your sellers might also have an idea when they hear that word staging, that might be very different of the reality of what you're recommending that they do in their home. Um, so basically buyers are always gonna gravitate to listings that look good, we all know that. They want them to be move-in ready for the most part. So staging can help a listing um, in an area where not everyone's staging, it can help them stand out because you might be that one house that's looking really photo ready and move-in ready. And on the flip side, if everyone in your market is staging, we want to keep up with that trend, which makes sense, right? We want our houses to look great. Um, good morning. Come hey, in. Good morning. We have a live body in here, guys. <laughs> um, so staging also helps enhance your reputation as an agent. Obviously, you guys have a brand. Your team wants to uphold a certain standard. So when you've got your picture and your name out on that yard sign, you want that product that they're walking into inside to look fabulous. And that's where that staging piece comes in as well. Any questions so far? Yes. I'm late. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Go for it. So uh, in the seller's market, when, when they're flying off, and I'm probably covered this. No, go for it. When they're flying the off the shelf, yes. um, can you tell me the advantage of uh, why I would choose a state? Great question. I like your 
give it to me right away. So basically more money. That's what I'm hearing anecdotally from my agents all the time. People right now, if they're selling, they're probably buying, they're going somewhere and they need to get absolute top dollar for that listing. So they want every penny, nothing left on the table. They want to really wow people. Um, and of course our buyers too, they know they're spending top dollar right now. So they want to make sure that they're getting the absolute best value and pulling at those kind of emotional heartstrings, making it feel like home, making it look beautiful on the inside. Good morning. Good morning. And really help to kind of drive them to that making an offer point. Not only that, but we're also hearing that as things are going through kind of that appraisal inspection process, um, it's helping people even you know, some of the professionals in the business too, unofficially, it's helping them kind of get to that closing finish line. So making sure the house is looking great during its inspection period. All that stuff. Of course, I know these days people are hardly even doing inspections, but um, we found that it's a little bit market proof. Like I said, it's giving people top dollar. It's helping get through kind of the more um, scrutinizing um, inspections. Yeah, we, we, I mean, I concur. So we, we, uh... When we see blemishes and and our, our sellers don't want to put any money in and I run out of energy, we find that staging pulls the pulls the eye from the blemish to the couch. Totally. You know what I mean? Gives them something to look at. And I, I always like to say that too. I never want um, and some sellers have the impression that we're gonna kind of cover things up. I never want to give the impression that it's you know smoke and mirrors or that we're trying to hide anything. Uh, that's wrong with the house. However, what we do want to do is uplift its full potential. So this is what it could look like, you know, if it's furnished properly, if it's cared for beautifully, if it's meticulously maintained, all those things. And again, that's not just bringing in furniture. That's everything under that staging umbrella, getting you clean, which we're going to get into, doing all the things you can do. A lot of them are free or just take a little bit of uh, sweat equity. Um, to take care of those things too, but just presenting that absolute best picture, that shiniest apple in the barrel, if you will, to the buyers. Good question, though. Good morning. <laughs> all right. That's all right. So that's a little bit of, of why, and we're going to talk about you guys as agents may feel feel very comfortable. You understand. You get it, Liz. We know staging's good, but we also have to convince our sellers, obviously. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So benefits of staging, we talked about this, your ticket to getting your listing sold faster and for more money, you want your listings to stand out. So non-negotiable in many parts of the country, I think we can all sort of relate to this depending on where the majority of your listings takes place. There are, I know we're in Canton, for example, nonstop. Grove homes these days, almost all the agents seem to be staging them right on the same block. Sometimes we'll move two or three houses down. And, you know, part of that is, of course, keeping up with the Joneses. If the house two doors down is beautifully staged, you don't want to show up with granny's furniture or maybe vacant and have those small bedrooms show really small. So part of it is truly just keeping up, um, staying competitive. Um, ages, like we said, they like great looking homes. So you guys are networking with each other all the time. You want to get your listings in front of as many eyeballs as possible. And so if your photos look great, we know that's step one to getting people to book their showings and then getting through the door. And of course, more showings hopefully means more offers. Um, and again, buyers are looking for value right now. So even though, um, you know, they're certainly, you know, the inventory is low, buyers are also wanting to get the absolute max that they can. Um, so sellers want every dollar, but buyers want to make sure that these high prices that they're paying are worth it. So we want to really sell the dream lifestyle of what the house could be, show off every amenity. Um, and really spoon feed to them how they want to use it. Um, and then last but not least, so staging is enhancing your reputation as an agent. And again, staging can mean a lot of things. It might be you guys being the stagers, it might be hiring a pro, but regardless, you want your listings that are associated with your picture and your name to look phenomenal. So that's all part of this, your brand of this big piece of the puzzle. Um, and certainly what Keller Williams, I'm sure, wants for all of their agents out there representing them as well. Any questions on that before we move on? I would say uh, two things. Go I for it. I would like that. That's okay. I love so thing. <laughs> my listing, my listing, and I'm, we're heavy. So we do. Last year we did. I don't know around seventy. We're around seventy-five percent uh, listing to buyers. So okay. We're heavy listing, and so we actually use the staging in our listing presentation. Nice. Okay. So we we show them the difference between a staged 
home in an unsafe. You are my star student. We're gonna get into that in right, a slide or two, and I will call. I'll call you right back up again. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna. I need to be a pain. I'm oh, sorry. you're not a pain at all. I'm glad. I want us to be. I mean, this is not formal. We're just learning together here. All right, convincing your seller to stage. So great segue there. Um, I would love to hear if anybody has, I do love a horror story. <laughs> if anyone has had um, encountered a seller that they've had a particularly difficult time, um, even just getting them to clean the house, anybody, I show of hands, anybody have that conversation, it can be very uncomfortable. Um, and there are, we're going to talk about some strategies to how, how to work through that. But um, as somebody who does several stage consultations a week and sees all manner of things in these homes, um, it's not easy to go in and tell someone that the way that they've been doing it or the way that they've been living might not appeal to a wide audience of people. That's a very hard conversation to have. So there's definitely, um, you know, an element of tact that's required. Um, and also, I think it has to be evidence-based. So when you're going in, you have to give them the why. Why are we asking you to do this? Ultimately, it should be in service to your seller. You want them to get the most money for their house. You want it to be a quick and easy process for everyone. But sometimes, you know, you can lead a horse to water. <laughs> sometimes we have to kind of help them, give them reasons to drink. So staging can be a sensitive topic. Um, and Keller Williams talks a lot in this material about you don't want to lose your customer because you're pushing the staging recommendation so hard. And again, staging meaning could be anything, even just getting painting done. Some people really draw a line in the sand. So it's important that you kind of get that listing first, maybe before you talk in a lot of detail about what the staging is going to look like. So one suggestion they give, and I know um, a lot of our agents do this, they will offer sort of generally staging as a service that's going to come with that listing and not necessarily get into the nitty gritty of what that's going to be until they've fully had that listing appointment and seen the house. So that might just be you going in and providing a checklist of suggestions to get it ready. That would kind of be on the least sort of um, mild <laughs> of the recommendations all the way up to we're repainting, we're putting furniture in storage and we're bringing in things. And that can certainly be a conversation that you can have with your sellers as far as what part of that you want to provide. But it might be nice just to know that that's something in your arsenal that you work with a stager or you have a stager on your team or you yourself will provide those types of suggestions so that you're providing value right up front um, to those sellers, especially those that are resistant. Um, so some tips for discussing staging. So I think I'm like, just gonna jump ahead here. Okay, so there's a few you know, different interest levels that you're gonna encounter with your sellers. You're gonna have people who are resistant, you're gonna have people who are receptive, and you're gonna have people who are ready. And there's a lot of people that are gonna be sort of somewhere in between. So the resistant seller looks like, we're not interested in staging, we're selling our house assets. I'm sure we've all met with sellers that are of that mindset. And that's okay. Um, so, you know, the suggestion there would just be to sort of pivot. I understand your feelings, it's up to you. With the, also though that piece of honesty that says you might not get the best price if we go as is. So every you know, home can be sold in any condition, you just isn't gonna be for the same price. Um, then you've got your sellers who are receptive, maybe haven't had a lot of experience with staging, but they've heard about it or they've seen it on HGTV. Um, they're not sure what their budget is. So KW kind of recommends the soft sell for them. So ask them sort of what they know about staging, share your own experiences. That's where pictures come into, um, seeing pictures of a beautiful home. Um, before and afters are very powerful. That's what we use in yep. our presentation. Perfect. Even just a picture. And an example of what they sold for. Exactly. So pulling those comps, like here's a stage tone, two blocks down, here's what it went for. Um, so any of that data, you know, it's hard to ignore numbers, especially dollars and cents. So if you can pull that data and show, you know, why this is powerful, why it's working, that's all the and better. they don't have to be your listeners. You can pull. Exactly. And so that's, again, where if you, if you don't have those tools in your listing folios already, you might, you might reach out to a professional. A lot of, you know, stagers that we work with have their own um, sort of merchandising tools that can help you can stick that in, their, in your folder listing or you can make your own. I know Keller Williams also suggests um, within the course packet a few websites you can go to where you can see those kinds of before and after photos. So there's tons out there. You know, we live in, a, in an age where you can Google just about anything. And so there's lots of tools at your disposal to kind of help with that real example piece. 
And then last but not least, you know, the human piece of it, gauge their reaction and adjust your presentation accordingly. If you're not getting very far, um, I've definitely been on a consultation before where I can tell, you know, the seller might be getting emotional or shutting down a little bit. A lot of times, you know, we're meeting people who are going through, unfortunately, a death or a divorce or, you know, they're downsizing because of life changes. And so we want to always be cognizant of that. And if it's, if you're not getting much traction, you know, it might be wise to pivot away, especially because you don't want to lose the listing. Um, another thing you can do, you know, consider doing a lot of agents that reach out to us, they want us to kind of be the bad guy. Um, good morning. They want us to come in on their behalf and deliver some of that uncomfortable <laughs> information to the sellers. And we're totally willing to do that. We're practicing doing that, you know, professional stagers go in and um, can hopefully deliver the, that sort of news with a smile um, so that it goes down a little easier. And we're sort of in and out. We're not there for the long haul. We might be there for an hour. We send a follow-up report and that's kind of the end of our interaction with the seller. Whereas you guys have to hang in through to get to that settlement table. Um, and of course you wanted those referrals afterwards too. So it could be, you know, time to bring in a pinch hitter and have someone help if it's in a particularly sticky situation. Go for it. So um, many times we um, we bring a stager in for a consultation. Yep. Um, so it's either no obligation or maybe we'll throw them $75. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if often they can use some of their own, own stuff. So stagers have different price tiers. Totally. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we say, look, you know, why don't we do a free consultation, um, which puts you at a better advantage of, of, over other agents trying to get that list. Absolutely. It's a value add right off the bat. And yeah, like you said, it might not cost you anything or it might cost you a very nominal fee to do that. It also it's... gets you in the home again mm -hmm. um, a second time which if you don't lock it up the first time, um, you know, it breaks down, the, the trust takes them some time sometimes. Absolutely. So a second visit would go a long way and you have a reason to go in. So the whole lock accepting another, another mm -hmm. issue. Great idea, yeah, building that rapport too. And that's something that's pretty, pretty minimal load on you, the agent to kind of suggest yeah. that or offer that in your package, so to speak. Yeah, we're, we really use um, the whole staging and getting the home ready to to differentiate ourselves from other agents. Yeah, I hear that. I get that feedback a lot as somebody in the, on the staging side of things. That um, I will have agents just point blank say, "We we used you, we dangled this carrot to get this listing, um, so I need you to come in." <laughs> and that's you know that's a win win. That's what we're here for. That said, there's definitely a lot of homes and and. It's not all one size fits all. There's certainly agents who feel very comfortable and confident doing it themselves, especially if it's just something minimal. So it doesn't have to be one size fits all. You might take a different approach with a different listing. Um, so explaining the staging, we touched on this a little bit, but I think it's one of the most important things we're gonna talk about today. I think a lot of your sellers um, might have an idea of what staging is that's not correct, or it's um, one size fits all, and it's really not. So suggesting to someone that you're, they're going to stage your house, you might get that initial bristle, like oh, what's wrong with my stuff? Um, it may be nothing. We might be able to utilize, um, you know, everything that's in the house or recommend just some things need to go away, to declutter it, to depersonalize it, to show off the space. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be getting, you know, bringing in white couches and mirrors. We could be doing, you know, just telling them how to move their furniture position in a different way that makes the room look twice as large, that type of thing. So I think easing them in, giving them those facts about what exactly it is, um, and then it really runs the gamut from very minimal intervention, if you will, all the way up to a more extensive service. Um, printed information we discussed, having a checklist at the ready of um, kind of general recommendations. I know that's something we include in all of our consultations. The first page is just those general recommendations that we know work for every house. It needs to be clean. It needs to have minor repairs done. It needs paint touched up or possibly neutralized. Um, pet things need to go away. You guys know these things. Um, even things like getting a new doormat and a nice wreath on the door, repainting the front door, um, changing your house numbers. And I know Keller Williams, right within this packet has um, some links, I think, to some checklists that were included in the Ignite series. Is that correct? Is that, does that sound familiar? 
Um, so there's resources, there's a lot out there. And of course there's the good old internet too. So you can find those things or you can turn to your pro and ask them if you have one. Um, so taking a consultative approach, I love the idea of the before and after pictures. It, a picture is worth a thousand words. You really, you only get one chance to make that first impression. Your photos are gonna be what everyone sees first. And so just convincing your seller by showing them here, this is the photo of what the house looks like if we get it ready for photos versus not. Giving the examples of that, I think is really powerful. Anybody have a, any thoughts on that or wanna add anything? Oh, I see Tom Atwood shared a checklist. We know Tom, hi Tom. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's some scripts and dialogues um, as well. So if you do get into some of those sticky situations, I know the course material has a couple of kind of prompts for how you might pivot and handle some of the seller responses. Um, pointing about, about how much money they will lose by not staging, I would, you know, I, I would go easy on that, but I think that time is money and so, can't put the toothpaste back in the tube once the pictures are out or once the show has begun. If they have decided to wait and see kind of approach and then stage, I would, you know, that's always going to be a more costly way to go about it. If they can start putting their best foot forward and doing it before getting everything prepped before you're hitting the market for the first time, ideally that's what you would do. Um, and not doing that could mean more time on the market, potentially having to take it off the market to then get it staged and get it back on. And we all know those are things we don't like to see on the, on the MLS. So um, it's not so much losing the money up front, it's just that time sitting and then having to adjust and pivot when we're not getting great feedback from buyers. I think also understanding your sellers and, and their needs. So, totally. uh, you know, the contingent offer, Let's get this home stage. Totally. You know, I, I want to sell. I don't want to pay the mortgage payment. You know, really asking the questions to put yourself in the best, you know, position to sell a home, which is stage. And uh, even there are also it's not some just things. necessarily the money; it's also the time or whatever. Yeah, practical considerations. I've definitely met with sellers that just say, "Hey, I don't have a storage solution, and I can't afford a storage unit, or I'm moving cross country, and you know." So just accepting the fact that we're going to work with what's in the house at this point um, and making it look the best it possibly can. It might just mean kind of a drastic clearing all the surfaces, paring down, bringing in fresh flowers. You know, there's a million ways to, to improve the household and how it shows um, without having to do those more extreme things. But if your seller is coming to you um, and just saying this is doable for us or not doable for us, um, yeah, I work with them. I always tell my clients right at the top of the appointment, nothing I'm going to say today is mandatory. I'm just giving you my best two cents with my buyer's hat on to let you know how this is how best to show this house. And I give them the recommendations and I say, you got to do what's doable for you and your family, but here's for what it's worth. You know, here are my best recommendations. Um, and I You're think the boss, I'm not. Exactly. It is your home. So, um, and ultimately it's your settlement check. <laughs> so, you know, just, I think delivering that with a little bit of, um, with a little bit of tact and like you said, understanding for where everyone's coming from. And then we also have those people who are like, I don't care, I want absolute top dollar for it. And you're looking at a different set of, of recommendations. All right, so we talked about this. Be diplomatic and see with your buyer's eyes. So I think we covered that pretty well. All right, so options for the staging consultation, which we've kind of touched on a little bit, Definitely a DIY approach is possible. If you're somebody who's very comfortable kind of delivering that news, you've already got some things in your marketing folder um, that work really well for convincing um, your sellers to kind of follow your, follow your lead, that's great. Some pros would be um, just like Jeff, Jeff, right? Yeah. Just like Jeff said, you'll spend more time with the sellers building that rapport. There's no monetary expense to you other than your time. Um, and then you'll have control over whatever the finished product is. Um, cons could be you may become the bad guy, which we kind of talked about. You might want to send someone else in to deliver some uncomfortable truths. Um, it might cost you more in time, which you could otherwise be spending lead generating than it would be to pay for the consultation. Um, and then you just might not feel like you have the skills or the resources to stage different homes. So you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. If you end up needing to bring in things that you don't maybe have in your inventory or you need to bring in 
full furnishings, things like that, obviously that would maybe be time to call in somebody else. Um, tips for doing it yourself. So make sure you kind of study those principles of staging, all the good things we talked about today. There's a few um, websites there that you can check out for more information. Checklists, I think that's huge. Whether you get them from a professional or whether you develop them yourself or you kind of do a combination of the two, I think it's really nice to be able to leave your sellers with something in hand um, that they can take and work on. I think it helps set the expectations so that when you're arriving on photo day, you know that those things have been taken care of. Um, and I'm not sure if it mentions this directly, but I know in the course materials, it even mentioned you might want to include something in your listing agreement that holds the seller accountable, um, that they would complete the things in the checklist prior to listing, just so that you don't have any unpleasant surprises when you're um, ready to list it. How, what would you recommend? For basic- and Accountability. Oh, for accountability. Um, I would say definitely the cleaning piece. Um, I think a checklist is a nice way to do that because there's absolutely no gray area for what you did and didn't do. Well, there's always gray area, but less gray area if you say the house needs to be um, clean, whatever your big bugaboos are, the things that are most important to you before you list having them complete the checklist um, prior. Um, I don't know if you want to have them sign something that says that or not. That was one of the suggestions that um, Keller Williams had in this. I don't I don't know how you guys feel about agents about, I, I don't look at the list. Of agents, so go for it. Tell me, tell me what you think. So I always do, if I do this, you do that. Oh, I like right? that, okay. So, okay, so just to revamp, this is my project, that's your project. I'm going to call you and update where I'm at. Love that. You know, yep. and so, hey, I'm doing my share. Are you doing your share? That's perfect, yeah. Um, and we do the same approach. So, um, when we do bring in what I call a partial stage, so maybe we're not, it's not a make at home, we're bringing in a few rooms worth of things. I will say in the email as well, once you've completed these items, oh, you'll that. be ready to arrive with our items. Right, right, right. So that's another way to do it. And again, you're not hurting anyone's feelings. Right. You're just being clear about expectations. Right. And, and I, think I don't want to show up as to a dirty house. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we did sort of learn that the hard way. We had to finesse our service agreement a little bit for the same reason that it had to be stage ready when we arrived. Um, you live and you learn, right? So yeah, I think um, as long as it's done with a light hand and it feels like a team effort, then yeah. that's probably a great approach. And then of course, developing a network of professionals. I think this is great too. Um, I'm sure you guys have a favorite painter or flooring guy or carpet cleaning service. And those are great to have. We get questions for those all the time. If you don't have them, if your colleagues or the professionals, the other vendors you work with very well may. So kind of having that so that it all feels like it comes under from your team. Like you've got this, I've got your seller covered. Um, I think that's a nice reassuring um, sort of way to, to approach it as well. So they feel like you can be their one-stop shop, so to speak. So another option would be to train an employee or a team member to do a staging consultation. So the pros of that would be, you know, train them to your standards. It's all very cohesive. Um, you have control over the finished product. The sellers would appreciate a specialized consultant. So even if it's um, just a designated person on the team, um, you can lift that person up as a specialist. Um, and then you're not, again, delivering the bad news. You've got someone on your team to do it. Cons would be just depending on the role of that person on your team, it might cost you more um, in time than it would to pay a consultant. And also, um, you know, they, again, they might not have the skills to stage different types of homes. So you might have somebody on your team that does all your consultations, but when you need to bring things in, you might turn to someone else. And I teams do it just from my perspective, all different ways. Hello, um, you know, all different approaches and. Um, I know we're, not, we're nothing if not flexible. We might be brought in on one job to do one thing at a, a completely different um, you know, expectation or role in another job. And, um, that's okay, whatever works for you guys. Tips for training your employees would be to have them shadow you both on the listing presentation and on the staging process for a number of months. Make sure that's pretty self-explanatory, make sure they've got it down. Um, supply them with those checklists and any reading materials, explain all the procedures, read the reasonings behind them and then holding your team member accountable for results, following up on the work by asking your sellers to evaluate the service. Any questions on that or any feedback? All right. 
So using a pro, I'll, I'm going to read this with a very non-biased approach, <laughs> but using a professional, uh, obviously your professional should hopefully be delivering top-notch quality. Um, again, we've talked uh, extensively about this at this point, but it requires um, or it allows you to not be the bearer of bad news. Um, homeowners are going to react potentially more quickly when a professional delivers the news rather than an agent does. And I have a lot of agents who sort of play, play dumb and say, oh, I don't know about paint. You'll have to ask us about that. And again, what they're doing is kind of uplifting us as the expert and taking themselves out of that so that they can really be the, their professional in their lane, so to speak, and have someone else kind of be handling the, the advice on that side of things. Um, professionals will have their own props and storage facilities, which um, is no overhead cost to you. Cons would be relinquishing part of your perceived value in the eyes of the seller. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, covering their fees obviously is an expense. And then potentially you would have no direct control over the finished product. So of course, whoever you hire, hopefully you've vetted, you've gone to see examples of their work. And so it wouldn't be a, an unpleasant surprise um, on installation day. Um, so tips for hiring a professional would be, just like we said, before choosing a stager, you want to learn their reputation, you want to visit current listings, um, you want to go over expectations and standards that you expect, I think that's very important. Um, you can hire a stager for an hour consultation after your listing agreement has been signed, and maybe um, I often encourage agents to attend that first consultation together so that they can see what we do and make sure that it jives with what they want to present to their clients. Um, and then providing the consultation as a free service to your seller and paying the stage or a nominal fee, that's pretty common. Um, most of the time, our agents are covering that cost of the consultation. It's not required. I've certainly had people do it other ways as well, but um, that tends to be the way people go. So that it's something you can offer as a value add for you. All right, evaluating the house. Um, Reviewing the property, so making an appointment, I'm sure you guys are already doing this, but making an appointment to go through the home as soon as possible after the listing agreement has been signed. I would imagine typically, or maybe not, I'm curious, do you typically visit the house prior to signing the listing agreement? I would assume so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess every once in a while you've got an out-of-state lady or yeah, something like that. Super but I know in the in the uh, packet it said ideally you'll evaluate the home while your homeowner is out. It'll be much faster for you. I thought good luck, <laughs> good luck with that. In a perfect world, ideally review the property when sellers are not at home. The evaluation will go more quickly. So, all right. So starting by evaluating the curb appeal, I think this is something that gets forgotten um, a lot of times, and it's huge. If you pull up to a house and it's icky. That, that inside could be gorgeous, but you might not even get there. It's an emotional purchase, and you do not want them on a downside. I actually sold a house. Somebody walked to the front door and said, I'm buying this house. Wow. And they did. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you want them on the right frame of mind when they walk through that door. And I push this a lot also because of the cost effectiveness of it. Cutting your grass, trimming your bushes, weeding, a little bit of, you know, if you have a flower bed, put a little mulch and some color, a, a potted plant. Um, like we said, paint or touch up your front door, hang a wreath, buy a $12 welcome home doormat. You're pulling, pushing all of those little emotional buttons that make it feel like home when somebody pulls up. It doesn't cost much, maybe a little bit of time, um, and it can just have a huge impact on, on reaching your buyers. Um, so in, once you're inside the house, look at the layout, determine where extra furnishings can be distributed throughout the house. Although in from my perspective, it's often getting some furnishings out. <laughs> a lot of times we're not adding in, we're taking things out so that it's, um, we can sell the house and not all the, all the stuff. I see a nod, I've been in that situation before. Um, note any rooms that are painted bright colors or have strong wallpaper that won't have mass appeal. Um, paint and wallpaper do tend to be sort of emotional um, for folks. I've noticed window treatments as well. I hear a lot about how expensive people's window treatments are. Um, and I often just will say, you know, they are beautiful and lovely, um, and, but they're specific to your taste. And we just want to really show off those windows and have as much natural light coming in as possible because people are really picky about their window treatments. You know, make it about your buyer, make it about appealing to the widest audience of people. 
people possible. I just say that a lot of times. Right? You don't say those are really ugly. <laughs> <No. laughs> Never. Um, no, but it is one of those things. They've chosen those special tastes that are specific to them and what works for their family. Um, so again, it's that being cautious that we're not offending. Um, and you can even, if you know, you can even compliment those things and say, I really love the look of this. However, you know, we're really seeing buyers loving X color on the walls or this type of flooring. So just make it about what we want, you know, transitioning that house from the childhood home to a commodity on the market. Try to help walk them through that process, which can be very difficult. Um, clutter, imbalance, and light. Light is huge too. Um, you know, adding a lamp or removing a window treatment can be huge to how our room photographs or shows. Check the flooring for any wear and tear, bad color pattern. Check the ceilings, the baseboards, the windows and doors for cracks. So anything, especially those little minor things that um, can be easily fixed. We always want to give buyers every reason to say yes and not pick out little projects. Because those little projects start to add up and it means less money for your seller. And yellowing ceilings. Mm -hmm. Or anything that I a lot of times we'll see leather damage. People say, oh no, that's been fixed, you know, right. years ago, which is great. Well, it needs to be painted because that's the first question people are gonna have. Right. Um, and then making your recommendations. So emailing them to the seller within 24 hours is a great policy. Um, and then I think we've talked about this a lot, but putting it in a tangible, digestible list is even better. So you say, if, you know, on our list, it even has like little check boxes next to each thing so that you know, whether or not they'll do them, who knows, but we can picture somebody truly walking through um, and checking those things off or, or mentally doing so. And then I know some teams do a calendar of um, kind of all the things that are going to happen prior to listing. And I think that's a really great strategy as well. Yes. All right, we talked about this a little bit, but holding your sellers accountable. I'm curious if anybody else has recommendations as well. Are there things that you do? I love the, if you do this, I'll do this approach. That's great. Um, you can formalize the arrangement and listing agreement under a special provisions. Um, and here's the, the actual language they recommended. The listing will go on the market and in the MLS on the date the agent determines the house is ready. And then it's up to you guys to figure out what ready might mean. <laughs> I think that is imperative that the house is ready. Mm -hmm. But I, I go into a lot of houses and I'm like, dude, like sweep the house, sweep the house. Totally agree. And if I could go on my soapbox for one minute for those times we're coming into a vacant to, to stage it and they're painting around us or doing repairs around us. And I know that, you know, we've thoughtfully selected all of these things. And I know that when these pictures come out, the guys will have got the contract will have thrown the throw pillows on the ground, put them back haphazardly. And I always think to myself, completely up to you, do whatever you want to do. But I would hate for you to pay for a service and not get 100% of that service benefit. Um, so I would always rather err on the side of let's push till next week. If it's really not ready, we'll come in when it's, you know, at that 11th hour, we like to be in right before photographers. Um, so whoever you're having do that, that should sort of be the last man and last man out, so to speak. Um, make sure that all this time and effort that they put in is not wasted, but it's actually ready and all those things have been taken care of prior. All right, implementation. So this is the nitty gritty of what you're actually going to be doing when we're suggesting all of these things. Decluttering, I'm sure that's something that everyone's preaching to their clients, but it can make, again, a really big difference. And it can mean everything from little items on the surfaces, like toiletries, remote controls, things like that gone for photos, all the way up to decluttering furniture itself. Do you have too many chairs in here? Do you have, you know, a way too oversized sectional in a small little back, uh, basement living area? Is it really showing the home in its best light, um, getting the max value? Cleaning, 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 cleaning. I think if people pick one thing on the entire list to do, it would be a deep clean. What do you guys think? Yeah. And even just the smell of a clean home. I mean, people, obviously you're not gonna see that in photos, but man, you're gonna notice it when you walk in. <laughs> Um, maintenance and repair. So like we talked about any of those small items that can be checked off the list ahead of time. Um, sometimes we hear sellers say, oh, I'll, we'll take care of that or we can negotiate that out. Again, think of your buyer as walking through 
and making a list with every project they're going to have to tackle if they buy the house. We don't want that to be happening. We want to give them all the reasons to say yes and to fall in love with the house. Um, and then creating an atmosphere. So those are all the little touches that come end up being a lot. So those are those little things like your stager might suggest adding lamps on your nightstands, maybe adding throw pillows on the sofa, maybe adding you know um, flowers or greenery on your coffee table. Those little things are what make it look polished and pop in a photo and make it feel like home to people. It's inviting, lots, you know, it invites you in. Same thing we talked about with curb appeal. You can do the same thing inside, usually for not a lot of money, but a lot of bang for your buck, creating that atmosphere. Um, and then beyond staging, there might be things, you know, people do with scents um, and, and uh, you know, I've heard people baking cookies. I'm sure you guys, have, you know, know that trick too for an open house, even, you know, playing music at an open house, those types of things can help create an atmosphere too. Um, so these are this little box here, those kind of four most bang for your buck rooms. I would say um, I would include dining area in this, so your kitchen there may not be needed, but your entryway. So what are people seeing when they first walk in? Um, a mirror is always nice to add there too, because people can literally see themselves in the home. They like that feeling. Um, but make it clean, make it functional. If you have a place to drop your keys, you can put your branding, your little signage there too as people come in, maybe shoe booties, masks, whatever the order of the day is. Um, but that's important, that's your first impression. Living area, obviously, where people are gonna be spending most of their time. Um, the kitchen, you know that. Um, clean, you know, countertops clear so people can see the appliances, the countertops, everything's in good shape, clean and pristine. Um, and then the primary bedroom. Uh, again, because whoever is purchasing the home is probably going to be occupying the primary bedroom. And so um, you want to make sure that shows that it's best. Just a little I would over. also say, you know, if you have a finished basement, make sure the lighting is right. Lighting throughout, totally. Yeah. But especially in those lower Dark levels. Areas. Yes, yeah. for sure. Um, and another thing I notice a lot, and this is just a little something, but um, if you go through the house and there's rooms that don't have any overhead lighting, just having a lamp in that room, even if it's a floor lamp, so that people as they walk through can check it out. If you're not staging it, uh, if you're leaving that room vacant, just having a lamp they can turn on a switch. Just, it's a practical consideration, but you know it makes it easier. Um, so here's a Gary Keller quote: "One of the key skills of a successful real estate agent is mastering the basics of how homes should be presented and staged properly." And truthfully, if you're not sure, you know, go through, click through listing photos, or you know. There's an abundance of those. See what kind of just like appeals to you on a gut level, what looks the best, what makes you want to go and see that house. Um, and you know, that's also a good way to find a staging professional or a vendor. If you really like the style, you feel like it's going to work with what you see appealing to sellers, then that's a good fit for, um, for your team. Overall considerations. So these are kind of what we talked about, that big gamut that staging runs. It can be very simple things. Some things we're, we're just going into a home and saying, hey, maybe reduce the number of personal photos, get it deep cleaned, um, repaint this one bedroom, and um, you know, get rid of these extra bark loungers <laughs> in the basement. That might be it for that house. Whereas on other houses, as we know, depending on condition, depending on price point, depending on neighborhood, um, you might be doing a significantly more, recommending a significantly more extensive um, amount of service. So that could include everything from, um, you know, painting, new flooring, new window treatments, um, or the rental of things to bring in, updated appliances, new roof, you know, these things that are much bigger. Any questions? What's your thought on religious items? I usually recommend taking those out as well. I kind of group them in with personal things and just that feeling like a blank canvas. You want anyone who comes into the house to feel that they could envision their own family there. And I, I always say with that one, this is not a mandatory suggestion, but here's the reasoning behind it. Uh, okay, and then overall considerations to continued pets. Um, I'm sure this is probably pretty obvious, but um, I always recommend definitely all evidence of pets gone for photos and if possible for showings as well. My feeling is that if even if you keep a meticulously clean house, once people see pet items, they're going to start looking for pet odor, 
pet damage, et cetera. Not everybody does. There's certainly cat lovers, dog lovers in the world who might be fine with it. But again, we're trying to catch, cast that wide net as possible. And that includes people who are not necessarily animal lovers. For open houses and showing appointments, make sure you have a plan. So where's the dog gonna be? Cats are often fine and leave you alone, but some aren't. So just making that plan with your sellers again so that expectations are clear. Um, little ones, small children need to be able, I, I don't, three favorite toys seems a little harsh to me, but what I often recommend is um, decorative storage. So a pretty basket or bin. I remember when we moved, I told my son, you can, anything that fits in this basket with the lid closed, you can keep. Everything else we're gonna say goodbye to until we get into the new house. So something like that, just so that it's a very concrete, simple thing um, and you're not making the moving process miserable for the little ones in your life. Um, teen rooms, take down any personal photos. A lot of times we see things taped to the walls um, in teen rooms. So anything that's not you know framed, I would recommend removing. We talked about the front door and the importance of the curb appeal. Make sure your doorbell works. That's great advice. Um, your hardware, again, this is something that you can easily either polish up or replace pretty inexpensively. Um, new welcome mat and a potted plant. I think, again, like if the, after the cleaning, I think there's two things I recommend almost most often. It makes a huge difference. Um, take a look at your sidewalks and make sure as they're coming up to the house, there's no repairs needed. Um, clean your windows. That's a big one, too. What about, um, do you ever recommend uh, poles for cabinets? New Absolutely. Cabinets? Yeah, that's a nice, quick little, to me, that kind of goes right in yeah, there with that hardware yeah. thing. Quick and easy weekend project, and you can really... It's Maybe amazing how it can change the look. Totally. Around. Especially a lot of those, um, like the 80s and 90s ones that people just didn't have any hardware on. That was the yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. Just adding a simple little, I mean, they're literally cents on the dollar at a place like you know Lowe's, and you can pop them in quickly and easy DIY project. Just updates the look a little bit. Um, Decluttering and cleaning. So they've got this in red, the two most important steps in staging. Um, so yeah, I would really start there. And again, before anything else happens, I think those two things need to happen. We need to get out things that are not showing house in its best light and get it nice and clean. Okay, so a little more on decluttering. Obviously clutter is part of our lives and it's not necessarily collectibles and tchotchkes. Clutter can just be you know, the multiple lotions that we use in the morning or, you know, our whole, our skincare routine, or um, I know at our house, there's four or five remotes for the various TVs and speakers and everything else. And those things in a picture just don't photograph well. So we want to clear anything <clears throat> small and easy to deal with off of those surfaces to make it look nice and neat. Um, open spaces, you know, it feels good to walk into a clean open space. And I love this tip and I tell people this a lot. One of the hidden benefits of decluttering is that your sellers will be halfway done with their packing by the time they have finished. So I say that too with personal photos, um, things like collectibles in the china cabinet, those types of things are painstaking to pack up. So if you can do it before the listing and then have a nicely staged china cabinet that just has you know some white dishware and clear glassware, those types of things, and all of your Oriole shot glasses are already nicely wrapped up and packed away, you've done that. You don't have to kick that can down the road. It's packed, it's in the storage unit, it's in the basement, nicely and neatly put away. Um, so you're doing yourself a, a favor. All right, so cleaning, I know we've kind of covered this quite a bit. Even those places that are you know hard to reach or you don't see every day, look up, look down, check the baseboards. Um, and I firmly believe in having a professional do it if you can. Um, especially companies that have experience with move out cleaning because that's kind of its own animal. <laughs> and we talked about too, even if only subconsciously, if the house feels and smells fresh, it's a win. And then maintenance, cleaning and decluttering will make the need for maintenance and repairs more obvious. So as we clean and shine things up, we might find things that need repairing. Um, a big easy one I see a lot are light bulbs. Make sure that the bulb, the bulbs in your vanity, they all match one another, that they're all the same wattage, um, and that they all work, those little types of things. Um, if you're finding that your punch list is getting longer and longer, it might be time again to call in a professional for any little repairs. And hopefully 
basically you as agents will have a, a network of people that you can recommend to those sellers. All right, creating atmosphere. So this goes a little bit beyond the staging piece and into really the whole vibe, if you will, of showing the house. So you might set the mood by using music, lighting. Um, I know down in the city, um, a few of the houses we've worked in have that surround sound that goes all throughout the house. And the agents really like to sort of show that off when they have a showing. So they'll have, um, you know, kind of a easy listening type something on that you can, so that buyers are, again, even if it's not pointed out to them directly, subconsciously they're realizing, oh, as we walk from room to room, this has this cool amenity. I'm hearing music in each room, which is nice. Um, it should smell good, but I would always go easy on air fresheners because it can seem like you're covering something up. So um, if you have sellers that just love scented candles and things like that, I would usually recommend paring that down. Maybe pick one scent and put them in a couple locations max in the house. And then another piece of this that, you know, staging really highlights are spoon feeding all of the amenities, all of the dream lifestyle of what the house could be by adding those little touches. So maybe there's a beautiful balcony out back and you put a tray with some greenery and coffee mugs out there. You're suggesting to the buyer, if you buy this house, you could be the person that drinks coffee on your veranda. You know, those are the things we're trying to sell. Um, same with the bathroom. If it's nice and clean and the towels are fluffy and white and we have, you know, some spa soaps out. Those are the types of things that, you know, people want to be included in their home. They want to live in that lifestyle. So we want to sell that to them. It's so funny. Often there'll be an odd size, small room or, you know, like hallway that has large space in it. that's not being utilized. So they've lived that way the whole time. And then a stager comes in and puts this little, like, something in that works there and they're like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I could have had that this whole time. My favorite compliment when we leave is people go, I don't want to move. Yeah, right. <laughs> we should have done this 10 years ago. That's the best compliment. But again, think of it as dollars in your pocket because now the buyers are going to come through and think, oh, look what this house could be. So keep up appearances. So again, you can give sellers a checklist to follow. So they'll be able to quickly and easily maintain the stage look. I think that's important too, especially in those situations where we're in an occupied listing or we're bringing in just partial items. Don't make it impossible for your seller to recreate that when you're not there. Um, you know, so the tell them to get rid of their children? <laughs> exactly. Well, I was going to say, in a perfect world and in this market, maybe you have photos followed by open house. They're gone for the weekend. You got it under contract yeah. by Sunday night or Monday. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? It has, it's been happening. Oh, yeah. But yeah, if they can get out of Dodge, I always think that's helpful, especially for that um, photo through open house. Or if they have little kids, just set that expectation that that's not going to look the same as it did on photo day. Um, I know Mark likes, Mark Simone likes to say, you know, magazine quality is for photo day. <laughs> and then I usually add, there's everyday life, and I'd like you to shoot for something in between the two for your showings. Hopefully he'll agree with that message. <laughs> but Della has been that for years. All right, and then staging an empty house. Why stage an empty house? Um, we've talked a lot about the emotional piece of buying. So, Wes, I don't know. I don't. I'm curious of your um, perspective on this. I see there they have the empty houses lead buyers to question why the house is vacant. I don't. I wouldn't necessarily be concerned if the house was vacant. There's lots of reasons that people move. I'll get that question. So I'll get the question, oh, why, why did they move? Okay. Oh. Yeah, I get the how long has it been vacant. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, to, see, to me, everybody's, you know, it's less. But not why move. is it vacant? Yeah, same. Right. And to me, it's less of a hassle. Of course, if, if everybody could sell their house and move first and then sell it, I would certainly do that too. Um, I think for me, it's more of visualizing the space and making it feel like home. Um, those are really just the two, you know, like we said, selling that dream, selling that lifestyle. Um, making it look its absolute best. Um, and also for practical reasons, showing them how the furniture can be laid out. There are certainly plenty of houses, a lot of open concept. It can be hard to figure out how to set that up. If you can give a beautiful example to the client, it'll take that guesswork out of it. Again, taking those projects off their list and um, making them just ready to sign on the dotted line and make it theirs. Um, your photos as well. I mean, there's just no, to me, clicking through photos of an empty house versus clicking through one that's been strategically and nicely staged. 
you're typically going to pick that one that you you know feels more like it's pulling at your heartstrings and you want to go see it. Um, so how to stage it, referring to your checklist, following the same procedures, kind of focusing on those main living areas, primary bedroom, um, putting those little decorative touches in here and there to make it feel like it's, I wouldn't necessarily say lived in, but I would say inviting. I probably use inviting there. Lived in, I think, can mean a couple of things. Um, and then again, if the house is empty, arranging for light maintenance. We talked about the fact that if there's furniture in a home, um, it does give buyers something else to look at rather than just searching for flaws, essentially. If you've got an empty house, you're just going to be, you know, your eyes can be drawn to any, any blemish. All right. Staging is not about trying to put lipstick on a pig. I have a team member who will remain nameless that sometimes likes to use that expression too. Um, you don't want sellers to disguise or mask flaws. I completely agree with this. You want them to show their home in its best light, clean, decluttered, and repair free. Um, buyers should only see what is right with the house and not focus on what is wrong. So that quote there says, price gets you in the game and staging gets you the offer. So I would agree, we're not trying to cover things up. We're not trying to hide things. We're trying to show the house in its best possible light, its best potential for your buyers. A picture is worth a thousand words. We've really covered that. I think having that beautiful photo is just the first step in having a smooth and easy sell selling process. Can't we sell the house as is? Yes, you can. But what does that mean? It probably means less money and more time on the market. Um, and then we're moving out. Why should we spend any more money on this house? I think, again, we've talked about this a little bit, but um, every small adjustment you make is going to be a return. And hopefully the next house, you know, you're going to have that much more <laughs> money heading into your next location. Um, so it's I really also, just... Go I ahead. also use um, statistics a lot. Right? Yes. Because statistics make you look professional and knowledgeable. And one of the statistics I use is, depending on the market, you get three to 5% more for your home if it's staged. I mean, so you can trip over, you know, dollars to pick up pennies, right? Yes. Um, but that also makes you look, I use a lot of statistics. That's good. That makes you look very professional. And I think also, I got a roll. So I think also, Bringing in a professional stager instead of doing it yourself, and you know, I feel like I can do a lot of it, but it makes you look like a big player, and it makes you look like a professional, right? And those are the people that want it. they want professionals and big players to sell their home. They don't want they don't necessarily want their best friend to sell their home who sold three homes. It's a, it's like, hey, sorry, buddy, I want a big player that knows what they're doing, and so that's. You know why totally. I recommend it. And no, that's I a great it, perspective. Use it in my listing presentation. Well, what, and one of my clients says bosses know how to delegate well, and that is a perfect example of if you're not trying to be the jack of all trades, master of none, and you're saying, "Hey, we have we have someone for this. They're going to help you. We're going to set you up with this person." To me, that like you said, you become then the expert who's referred them to the other expert, um, and you've created a network around that seller, so they feel supported and they've got a team approach going into selling their house. Everything's going to be taken care of for them, and that's. I mean, that's a nice feeling ultimately. Thank you so much for your no, thank you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. All right. Your action plan. So moving forward, um, it's just suggested that you don't put away your guide from today without figuring out how you're going to put all this into action. So um, write down any steps you're planning to take to improve your skills. Um, you can share it with your colleagues. Feel free to ask me any questions you might have about Moving forward, if there's anything we didn't cover that you were dying to know about staging, I'm happy to answer any questions for you. And then, of course, um, there's other courses in this tactic series. I believe these have all been recorded, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to go back and um, revisit any of the other topics or you want to um, watch any part of today that you might not have been able to participate in, feel free. ahas to achievement so anything anyone wants to share and you don't have to share that with me necessarily but if you want to um, feel free if you if you have anything any takeaways you'd like to share otherwise you can jot them down in your notes
And thank you. I really appreciate being invited here today. And thank you for hanging with me in person too. And um, all the friends on Zoom as well. Thank you all for, for being here. And um, like I said, feel free to let me know if you have any questions, you can throw them in the chat. Um, and there, it looks like there's an eval for you to fill out as well.